Now, we originally believed that the Robert Kraft case would continue today, but it appears that due to the judge being sick, we're off today and he'll be rescheduled indefinitely. But we have more information here for Aaron Carroll with the latest. If we had something that was illegal, it was going to be obvious. You're looking into the prying eyes of a detective who watched a video feed of customers inside a Florida massage parlor. Some were said to be paying for sex. Others were not. She came in and... Um, Fairly quickly, I realized that this was probably going to be a legitimate massage based on her demeanor. Defense attorneys for Robert Kraft convinced a Florida judge that the police operation was unconstitutional. I think they said, which I have no reason to dispute, they were trying to maintain uh, the dignity and respect and concern for the dignity and respect of these people. The fact is, that's not what the Constitution requires in any part of this country. The search warrant which authorized the sting did not require police to minimize their intrusion into each patron's privacy. And police did little to minimize intrusion on their own. The instructions on minimization have to be put in the affidavit and or the warrant. It has to be very clear and set out and explain what it is you do to prevent innocent people or innocent conduct from being captured. The judge said detectives here simply saw and recorded too much. The spa advertised services for women clients and, in fact, more than one woman had a significant portion of her spa time viewed by a detective and the entirety of her spa time recorded and placed in Jupiter Police Department records. Failing to consider and include instructions on minimizing the impact on women is a serious flaw in the search warrant. The judge's order went on to criticize the viewing and recording of the legitimate massages of male clients as well. Prosecutors unsuccessfully tried to convince the judge that they did minimize their intrusion. Officers want as much evidence as they can get. They called us on the phone. They told us what we had. We said shut it down because four and a half days was plenty. The judge suppressed the recording and the subsequent traffic stop, which identified Kraft. Without that evidence, the prosecutor has no case. This is Aaron Keller for the Law and Crime Network. So there we are with the Robert Kraft case as to how that works out in terms of the, the, uh, the motion being suppressed. Now, I'm now welcomed here with my guest, Paula Nateri. Paula, welcome, welcome Hello, to the thank show. Thank you for having me. Now, as we look at this Robert Kraft case, it, it appears that the judge ruled in Robert Kraft's favor that the video was suppressed. So the question is, what's next? So just because a case, the evidence is suppressed in a criminal case, doesn't automatically mean the case is dismissed. What, what's left to happen after that is to see if there's any other evidence that's valid, that was validly obtained, or, or independent evidence to prove the case. And in this particular instance, we're left to believe that the only evidence they had against Mr. Kraft was the evidence that was obtained in that spa room. And I would think they have to dismiss the case. Yeah. So it, it appears, and, and kind of going back and forth with that, so the video is out. It's probably never going to see the light of day. But what about the, the alleged woman who might have con conducted these acts or any eyewitnesses that might have seen what occurred in there, um, kind of separate from what the officers did? Could that still be used against him? So, so any evidence that has nothing to do with, that's independent of this particular search warrant, this particular um, wiretap or, or, or authority to get the, uh, the surveillance, could be used if it was, again, if it was valid, if there are independent witnesses. They, they would just have to assess exactly what, what evidence they have. Um, if there are, um, I don't know if there were informants or typically, you know, the types of evidence they use in these cases. They have undercover informants that go in um, and pretend that there are real people getting massages. I don't know if they have that kind of evidence. It seems like it was a pretty widespread investigation. And this is a very, very hot, um, a very hot uh, item across the country now, these, these human trafficking cases. This, in particular, I understand, was not was not a human trafficking case. There, there, I, I understand that the prosecutor has said that there's no evidence that there was human trafficking in this particular spa, but of course, across the country, that's not true. Yeah, and, and so this could not just be the fact of them trying to pick up the, 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 the torch here, per se, for this specific case, but maybe the torch, as you're saying, for all incidences like that, and they might continue to go forward just on that basis. That, that would be interesting as well, I yeah. guess. Yeah. I mean, I think this case is compelling and important for many reasons. I think that the judge, uh, in the decision, he laid out the fact that this is not—there's not a lot of precedent for, for these types of searches. Um, I think 
that that this will set the standard as to, to minimization and how the, the prosecutors and the government, the law enforcement need to approach these kinds of surveillance videos. Certainly the public, we all have an interest. Those of us who, who frequent um, spas and get facials and massages, we want to know that there's not uh, undercover uh, recordings and people recording our, our sessions. I mean, that's a very, very significant violation of our privacy rights. So, so I think that, that independent of the fact, the irony that this is Robert Kraft, the owner of the, the Patriots, is, is um, it begins, it, it puts the spotlight on this case, but separate and apart from that, I think it's a very important case. Yeah, I, 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 agree. I fully agree with you that it seems to be that while this might be a small spa in a small town, it has larger repercussions to the entire Fourth Amendment as to how these types of investigations, maybe not just for this town, and, and maybe this case moves on at a higher level, maybe gets appealed, maybe it, it becomes more binding case law. We never know. But uh, could that be also an incentive for the prosecution to push forward rather to say, uh, you, you know what, maybe our strongest bit of evidence, that being the video, is suppressed? But it kind of, as you alluded, if there's anything there that's not tainted, we can maybe expect there to be a trial going forward. Well, so the, the prosecution is going to have to make a decision whether they appeal this decision of the lower court judge to the higher courts. And when they do that, they're going to assess whether they want there to be, um, there want to be legal precedent. And, and I think that the case law, the federal case law, which is mostly what Judge Hanser is relying upon, is very, very... Uh, strict and certain in this area. I mean, you have to expect that in this context, judges are going to find that there's a reasonable expectation of privacy for patrons who, who frequent these kinds of spas. And, and then it becomes a question of whether there was proper minimization. And there's absolutely no minimization here. There was just the record is solid, that there was no attempt to minimize, which is a solid tenet of foundational rule of Fourth Amendment law. So I, I don't think they have a chance with the higher court. I think that um, they may just decide to close the book. Certainly, if it wasn't Mr. Kraft, uh, I think they would close the book on this and just dismiss. But, but they know that the world is looking at this case, and so there's probably a lot of political pressure to pursue the charges because they don't want the scrutiny of the public saying, well, here's another rich guy who's gotten a free pass. Yeah, absolutely. And I fully agree that there's probably going to be a much more uh, diver deep into this, or a deeper dive, sorry, into this. Paul, I want to thank you very much for joining us today. We're going to sign you oh, off. Thanks so much for having me. Always absolutely. a pleasure. Thank you. And we'll be back with more from live coverage from the Timothy Jones case after this.